Welcome to Policing TV and this edition of Talking Crime with me, Danny Shaw. We're here in Dubai for the World Police Summit, which has a very international flavour, as you might expect. And joining me to discuss events is Hanneke Eckelmans from the Netherlands. Uh, you are the Deputy Commissioner of the Force Command Team in the Netherlands. Thank you very much for joining us. You've been taking part in a discussion about leadership while you've been at the summit. What are the key lessons, what are the key points would you say that makes a good leader in policing? Obviously there are many lessons, but I think the most, most important we talked about yesterday was how to prepare for the future, how to, uh, to adapt leadership and uh, adapt your, uh, police organizations uh, to be able to face new technologies, uh, difficulties in uh, getting um, uh, new colleagues, well all the questions that uh, we have on policing in the future, uh, uh, how is leadership able to, uh, to form an uh, opinion on it and lead the organization and that's difficult, it's really difficult because there's a lot unknown, so how to deal with the unknown. <laughs> That's difficult. How to deal with the unknown, but you're the leader because people look up to you as the leader, don't they? And, and, and when there's a pandemic or when there's a terrorist threat, people look to the leaders to do. say, don't worry, don't panic, this is what we're going to do. Well, the, the most important thing is uh, to stay calm, especially in the face of the public, but also for your own organization. Uh, know what to do um, and sometimes realize that you've made a mistake and tell it was a mistake and you have to act differently, uh, which may sound as weakness, but is, uh, uh, it shows confidence in, um, in dealing with difficult situations. And as we know, it is difficult. The pandemic is uh, the best example. We didn't know what, the ex uh, what to expect. We didn't know uh, what would happen and we had to react. And what is the best way to react um, to the public, stay calm. So can you give me an example where you have had to stay calm, perhaps where others have been losing their heads a bit or mm -hmm. getting a bit overexcited or but to be raise honest, voices, you know? You know, to be honest, there are always uh, um, my colleagues uh, who are uh, in command of the operations, they have to stay calm. But they only can stay calm uh, if we have a good debate, what to do, why we do it, good arguments, and decide what to do, and uh, don't don't mess with all the other arguments, uh, emotions, but uh, uh, you have to take a decision and stay with it until you have new information and there's reason to uh, to change. But the I think what uh, my own colleagues uh, expect is uh, to, that they can see uh, what, the, uh, what you take in consideration when you make a decision. Why you choose uh, a solution and not another. And uh, be straight about why uh, some solutions are not chosen. And what, what, what arguments, and sometimes there are no arguments. So we have to decide now, so we decide. And if we're wrong, time will tell. We, we don't know yet. <laughs> Because sometimes you've got to make an immediate decision. Immediate. You've just got to decide. You can't no. have a debate that goes no. on for hours. No, no, <laughs> yeah, in no. policing, no. You, you have to you have yeah. to act. But, but we we, yeah. we also know that uh, uh, after the action, uh, everyone expects um, uh, well that, that we had the most brilliant ever discussion with all the arguments and took days to have uh, to decide. And we all know in real life that's not how it works. Yes. Well. Yes. Is, is, are those qualities of leadership, is that something that can be nurtured, that can be learnt, or is it, or is it something that is sort of innate in, in you as, as an individual that, you know, you talk, sometimes people talk about young people, he's got, he or she has got leadership qualities, you can see them as a leader. What's your, what's your experience of that? I mean, I don't know, perhaps, the, you know, the, the, the younger Hanukkah was a different person. Well, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to elaborate on that. <laughs> no, the, um, um, first of all, you have to realize that uh, different situations ask for different kind of leadership. So uh, if 
so if, if there's someone and uh, they say that, that person has leadership qualities, um, it doesn't tell me anything. Because what are leadership qualities? It depends on the situation. Um, and I think in, uh, in policing, it's, uh, it's about knowing your job, uh, professional knowledge, knowing your organization and knowing your people. Um, and that's where it starts. And then you have to understand in, um, how do you say that, uh, how you operate with political, uh, media, uh, all, the, all the other um, very important um, issues that are happening, but how to involve it in policing and stick to uh, your profession. But realize everyone's, everybody's watching, having an opinion, um, and don't get, de is it deterred? Um, distracted. Distra don't get distracted. No. In terms of the pandemic, what would you say are the key lessons, the most important lessons that need to be learned? Well, I wouldn't call it a lesson, but what, uh, I think what uh, the hardest part of the pandemic for the police uh, was, of course, everyone was affected, so, so were my colleagues, but um, uh, we have a history of co uh, community policing. And uh, what happened is that uh, a lot of citizens were uh, getting angrier and angrier, and it turned uh, against the police. We didn't make the decisions, but we were the face of the, uh, of the decisions. And um, I don't know if, we, uh, uh, if we're clear on what to do when that's going to happen again. Because it was really difficult. We had uh, um, uh, heavy riots, um, and not just um, protesting about anything, but uh, targeting police uh, colleagues, really targeting. How far into the to the pandemic did that happen? How many months uh, in? January this year was the last time, I think. I'm not sure. I'm not good at, uh, yeah. at dates, but 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 uh, quite recently. And really targeting police uh, colleagues. Um, but you're yeah. just enforcing the rules. Yeah, but it's not. not uh, we can say that, but that, that's not how it works. Uh, so large groups were are really coming to fight. And it was, that, was, that was new to us. And um, that was very hard on my colleagues. So one day are standing in line uh, because of the riots and the next day it's community policing. That's difficult. Mm. And um, I don't know, uh, I don't know, we don't know the answer yet what to do um, uh, in this uh, situation. We had talks about other sort of uh, munition to stop uh, riots, but that was hard to connect with community policing. It was the uh, hard policing uh, that we're not keen on. What sort of methods do you use in when you get a riot, when you get a disturbance like that? Do you have um, water cannon? Do you have rubber rubber bullets, we plastic have. bullets? What, what 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 sort of weapons did you use this this time? Uh, at this time, uh, we used uh, the water cannon. We had to use it the last two years a few times, and that was for the first time in years, years. Um, and um, and it, 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 uh, well, I, I saw the footage of what happened, uh, especially in Rotterdam. Um, and you could see that what we usually have, uh, what we use to stop the riots, was not enough. Um, and to realize that uh, what, we, uh, what we build on, on in riot control was not working in this situation, um, well, it's a bit scary. Because the safety of my colleagues. We have to be sure they're safe. Of course, there's, uh, there's, there, there's, of course there's a risk, but uh, the risk was getting higher and higher. Luckily, the pandemic uh, <laughs> slowed down. I don't know how to, uh, how to explain that. But I don't know what would have happened if we had riot after riot uh, with the same kind of violence. So it, 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 uh, I hope we, have, we use our, the time well to decide what to do next time. Because we are used to uh, getting good information, uh, to be able uh, for colleagues to be in, um, uh, in a, a demonstration. Infiltrating uh, Well, not even well. infiltrating. Uh, so you can see they're, they're in between uh, all the people who are demonstrating. And uh, so we 
usually know quite well what is going to happen, sort of. And but this time it was different. You weren't getting really that different. intelligence. Uh, uh, well, I would, if, I say much. if I say bad intelligence, I insult my colleagues. But we d didn't have all the intelligence we needed, uh, like the intelligence in telegram groups, the the, uh, the conversation telegram groups, mm. uh, closed groups uh, where we couldn't get into or we're not allowed to into uh, by law. Um, and uh, we realized we 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 need that information too. Otherwise, we react, um, and then we're too late. And uh, it's, it's that's that's new for us, and uh, I think it will be uh, it, it will be the same in other countries. And we have to learn. We use the time we have now to learn what to do next time. Yes. And did you have a lot of colleagues injured in those riots? Uh, more than usual. But it's I think it's it's not uh, not even about getting injured. Of course, mm. that's, that's that's terrible. Mm. But uh, colleagues who who told me uh, that's the uh, it's the first time I can uh, I can see in a demonstration people in front of me who are there to hurt me, not because they're mad at government or whatever, but just there to hurt me. That's just, that's their only goal. Uh, colleagues who have been years in, in, in working in, in, in riot control and uh, who said, I'm not sure uh, I want to to, uh, to do this anymore. Mm. Um, family at home who said. Now, could you please stop this? That's, really? that, that was all new to us. But you've had disturbances in the Netherlands before. There have been problems. I mean, there have been certainly hooliganism at football yes, matches. Yeah, you've had, haven't yeah, you? Not the same. Not the not same. same. Not the no. same. Uh, targeting colleagues. Oh, oh, of course, we know there's a demonstration. Um, um, you want to dissolve the demonstration, and some people don't want to leave. They're going to throw uh, things, but but yeah. you, you you can see it, uh, you see it building, uh, building up. Um, but this time uh, we saw uh, people getting from nowhere and jump to fight. I think this is something to do with the pandemic and how it's affected different people in different ways. Well, perhaps not only the pandemic. Um, yeah. Or the rule, the the. The rules, the you know, uh, presumably no, more, more, was there an anti-vax, uh, anti-vaxxers, not, not feeling represented by government. Yeah. More people, um, uh, well, it, 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 dissatisfaction all over about anything, because we see uh, demonstrations um, uh, with large groups demonstrating for totally different things. One group, mm. just uh, uh, just uh, against something mm. and um, uh, I don't think it's caused by the pandemic but it's uh, it was um, what's the word um, it, w it was it was it, it didn't help as it, 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 no, it, yeah. it, 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 it became yeah. violent very fast yeah now also the pandemic and I think you've you've spoken about this what will you say are the main points that you have seen during the pandemic in terms of how crime gangs have adapted we saw uh, a, a change from traditional crime to uh, uh, crime on internet, fraud, phishing, uh, ransomware, um, and, uh, and, and a huge increase. Um, and uh, what we uh, we also saw, but it was it's more now with the situation in Ukraine, in Ukraine than uh, it was during COVID, but. Uh, uh, targeting uh, hospitals, uh, mass companies, and, and, um, that, that, that was a change that we saw. Um, and what, what, is, what is methods are you using to sort of counter those, those problems? Because well, policing is having to adapt yeah, as well. Well, that, that's, uh, that's uh, actually, a, uh, again, a question about leadership, because you realize um, we can uh, go on, as we always did, and add uh, the part on internet, but uh, if you're if you're looking very good, you can see it's it's a change. Um, we uh, we need um, more focus on uh, digital crime, uh, which means we need uh, a, a, a more diverse um, workforce. Uh, workforce. Um, and uh, well, coincidentally, we have a lot of people uh, uh, leaving. The force because of age, uh, so we, we we can try to to, to change uh, the, the 
uh, the workforce. But that's that's hard. But it, and and uh, but our whole uh, system of choosing what sort of investigations we do, the pri uh, what what uh, has priority, that has to change. That's difficult. Mm -hmm. We're used to a way of working, and uh, and, and it's nice. Uh, we know what to do, what to expect, and, it ha and we have to change it. You and have to focus more on digital. We have to. Digital skills. Yeah. It's the same same issue in the UK. Officers, many officers, don't have necessarily the skills that they need. No. It should become something that is um, natural. S natural. Just, pa just part of a part of a part of a job. It, it's it's a skill set. Uh, well, and not everybody has. And, uh, but it's also a mindset, a mindset about what is most important to do. Um, uh, well, traditionally, it's more logic to go if you, if there's something physical, uh, if you, uh, if, uh, if, if the victim uh, saw uh, what happened, and, and now they just, well, the, the ransomware. Uh, Day-to-day -day crime uh, is getting digital. Just the the, the easy the, 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 the robberies the the, the um, burglaries. Uh, it's much easier uh, to, to buy uh, a DDoS attack. Uh, it, it's how much is it? Uh, Fifty euros. Uh, you buy a set and uh, you can uh, earn a lot of money uh, sitting on the couch. Yeah. Much safer. Uh, not a big chance to be uh, to get caught. So. Do you also have the problem that? when you're investigating particularly more serious crimes, sexual offences, rape, very violent crimes, that the, you have to amass a lot of evidence from mobile phones, from smartphones mm -hmm. and computers. Um, in the UK, certainly forces are overwhelmed by the amount yeah. of material they have. The amount of data. Everyone's got a few phones and yeah. smartphones and yeah. data, and in that data might be something that's it absolutely might be, yeah. central. Is, is that also an issue, or, or, is, or, do, or do the Netherlands have a good way of dealing with that? Uh, not a good way, uh, but we have, uh, uh, every year we have better solution, but it is the, uh, it's about the big amount of data and how to analyze the data. How do you do it? Uh, and um, we have, uh, uh, we have a, a, a few programs to, to analyze. Uh, and we work together with uh, uh, TNO. Can't know where, it can't tell you where it stands for. To to uh, to research uh, what to use uh, to uh, to not spend all the many many hours checking the data. Uh, you have to. Uh, you need artificial intelligence. There, there are all sorts. Are of you using artificial new. intelligence in Netherlands Police? Uh, well, um, uh, yes, we do, but as you know, uh, there's a lot of discussion about uh, AI because of privacy. So uh, the discussion will will be and, and, and is now uh, the balance between privacy and safety and security. So what are we allowed to do? Um, and uh, especially when it's it's uh, the, about specific specifics of persons, you know, it's difficult. So yeah. the example. You're investigating a serious case. Mm -hmm. You've got different smartphones. You've got a computer. Mm -hmm. You've got other digital devices. Mm -hmm. Take them back to the police station. Um, and there's a ton of data there. Yeah. Can't go through that no. <laughs> individually. Mm -hmm. Do you have the means using AI to sort of search for the the key things? Can that help tell uh, you? We we, ha yeah. we have, but uh, when I say we have. Uh, please don't hear. Uh, it's very sophisticated, used everywhere because that's not the, that's not the case. Uh, but for serious crime, we use it, and we use it in uh, uh, child pornography uh, cases. Uh, and especially in the last case, we have very good AI uh, to to find the images, uh, so uh, <laughs> my colleagues don't have to look through all the data. For obvious reasons, that's horrible. And presumably somewhere like this the in Dubai at the World Police Summit there are so many exhibits <laughs> ex yeah. exhibits and stands about yeah. technology and computers presumably this is something you're keeping an eye out and looking for possibly for the latest techniques I don't know well the, the interesting uh, thing is it was in one of the panels yesterday it was an Australian lady who who, um, who made a point and said uh, the, in the industry does have a responsibility too for safety. Uh, 
so you should uh, co-create a system um, according to the needs of uh, 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 police um, and of course the economical uh, reasons for, for the company. Um, and the question is, will uh, companies, uh, the big tech companies, uh, will, they, will they do that? Or just build something, sell it to us uh, and hope we, uh, we pay a lot of money during the years because we want to adapt it. Uh, but you want to create together so you don't adapt a, an, assisting, an uh, existing system, but uh, create the system you need. That's what we're now trying to do in the Netherlands. Uh, to, uh, so to design and to create, um, to solve a problem we have and then uh, uh, ask the industry uh, to take part in it. Right, so you do and it alongside but that's, but them. That's, yeah. uh, that's early start, uh, very early in, in the yeah. process, but I think that's the only way to do it, because we can't afford it. And as I, I always try to, uh, try to explain, uh, safety is uh, the re responsibility of everybody. It's not our problem. So, so, you s so if I'm right in saying, so you say, right, we need something that can do X, Mm -hmm. You go to some partners, some private companies mm -hmm. or computer experts mm -hmm. and say, this is what we need it to do. Can you create something or help work with us to do it? Plus, you might have the benefits for you commercially for others. They do need the benefits, others. of course. Yeah. 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 But we but want to be sure it's ex it is what we need. Yeah. And uh, uh, it's, it's, it would be a bit strange to adapt our way of working to this, the available systems. Yeah rather than going oh there's a system it's not quite what we need but yeah. we'll take it and see if we can work our systems around it so it's a different approach and the way yeah. uh, what, what we see now in all the um, uh, uh, different uh, te uh, technical possibilities that we have to decide on architect and i'm not a tech person and, and don't know anything about it but uh, you have to decide what uh, architecture we need that we use everywhere so if you, if you get something new, it could be built on the same uh, architecture. Well, it seems logic to me. Uh, and so there are a few uh, ground rules you need if you work together with companies, with the tech companies. And uh, it would be even better if we could decide on that internationally. But maybe that's a step too far that, right that now. Might, that <laughs> might be a step bit too <laughs> far. Now, one of the things I want to discuss with you is about police force mergers because in the Netherlands you've gone through this process uh, a few years ago. Can you just talk us through what exactly happened because it's of great interest uh, to us in England and Wales where we have 43 forces and there's always a debate about whether there should be fewer. Um, after all the confusion and uh, uh, feelings of loss <laughs> which come in <laughs> when you merge, uh, we realize, especially during the uh, pandemic, that uh, we were able to work as one force, uh, one information position. Uh, uh, we, we decide on a central point how to behave, what, what, to, what to do, uh, what, what we need, what we ask of uh, 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 government, uh, politics, uh, and it really works. It really, even the, uh, the people uh, who are not very enthusiastic uh, say we would have never been able to do this. And we have uh, uh, one uh, uh, computer system. So it's 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 uh, it's it's one system, uh, which is obviously for intelligence uh, uh, really necessary, but also in all sorts of communication we have all the the, the same working methods. It's it's way better, but uh, we're still in the puberty. We started in 2013, uh, and sometimes it, uh, it it crashes because we realize. Um, uh, we uh, we haven't merged it too, uh, well enough, or we missed something emerging. But okay. <laughs> so in 2030, how many police forces 25. did you have? You had 25, no. and now you're saying you've got one. One. But what about the local? What about the local element of, of the police? Isn't that something that's been lost if you have an no. identity between the no, local? No, no. It's uh, but it's uh, at the core of Dutch policing is community policing. So uh, if uh, the strength of the Dutch police is um, uh, locally connected and uh, sometimes it's, it's, it's difficult uh, discussions on a national level uh, because uh, of course uh, there are many questions uh, at the national level the police should do all of that and 
um, what we can say is if that is what you decide realize will be not be locally connected anymore because there's nothing left to uh, decide on a local level and the decisions on what is uh, uh, what should be uh, on a national level is made with the mayors from uh, 25 uh, with 25 mayors how do you get agreement You've got uh, 25 people in well, the room. There's, there, there's always a chairperson. <laughs> 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 but was that, so was that a painful process leading up to, to, to the scrapping of 25? Well, I think forces? for a lot of colleagues it was painful because it's also about loss. It's about loss of the identity of the uh, organization you were part of because you, uh, uh, it, it, it gets one big organization and not that smaller one you were used to. And as you know, in, in police, that feels like family. And it's now a very big family. Um, but the, so, we ha of, of course, it was about loss. Um, Did but it in, save in money? The end, Has it saved money? Has it, has it cut uh, bureaucracy? Well, when we started, uh, we, uh, there was decided for us it had to save money. So, so it, that, that was tough the first few years. Uh, it's getting better now, but it's it uh, it, it saves money, but that, that it comes at a price. And you don't think it's ever going to go back? No. The other way, you don't no. think so? It's not a very big country, the Netherlands. <laughs> <laughs> but it's it's irreversible. Finally, I want to ask you about trust, increasing trust and confidence in policing. It's a big debate in the UK, what do you think is the key to raising levels of trust amongst the public? One of the things to be proud of in the, uh, for the police in the Netherlands is that the trust in the police is very high. Is it? It's what what sort high. of levels is it? That, then? It's, it's about 75 or 80 percent. So it, it's really good, um, which is nice, uh, but uh, we want to keep it that way. Uh, and uh, this is despite the pandemic and all the problems that you the mentioned. Yes. So yeah. uh, that is uh, well. It makes us even more aware how important it is to keep that trust. Yeah. Um, and um, well, today I talked with a colleague um, uh, from the uh, from the U.S. Um, and uh, what I told her is that the pandemic. Uh, we, we were lucky in the pandemic that we ha didn't have. Uh, a lot of violent crime anymore and you in the US that was different she told me um, and uh, you, we saw that the, that the people respected what the police did during the pandemic and the big exception was the riots um, the problem uh, uh, was the, the different groups people uh, who uh, well realized uh, were, were all affected by the pandemic and they uh, uh, well, it's bad, but okay, it happens. And the small part it w it wants to fight to resist. Um, we we got a lot of support from the bigger group, who understood what we were doing. So, yeah. it, uh, it, well, it, 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 uh, well, high, high trust, still high trust, but we have to be careful to keep it that way. Hanneke Eckelmans, thank you very much for joining us. It's been absolutely fascinating talking My to pleasure. you. Thanks a lot. <laughs> thank you.